you gorgeous people it's vlog ember 27 <laughs> we're getting through these quick now um i need to catch up on myself i'm only backed up a couple of days now so it's crazy anyway i hope you're all well let me know in the comments how your sales are going how you are in general if you're ready for that big c word <sighs> i need to stand myself up when i think about christmas i love christmas obviously i'm buying loads of christmas stock and i love it and things are selling but when it comes to buying presents, we are a little bit behind, I'm not gonna lie. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, consider giving me a big thumbs up, it really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already, why not? It's free, you can unsubscribe at any time. And hit the bell for notifications. Let's get into it, guys. I need to ask you all a bit of advice. So, this has happened a lot of times and nine times out of ten i do manage to get some sort of resolution out of it what is good for me but this time i don't feel i'm going to so i sold a vase on etsy and it went for 60 pound with postage so it was going to the usa it was a heavy vase so it cost around 30 pound postage they paid 30 pound for the vase anyway it got there and it was broken i sent it with royal mail Royal Mail are now telling me, after a long drawn out thing, I sent off my claim form to try and claim my money back for the breakage. I sent in all the information they asked for, but they have denied my claim because they are saying that I should have packaging details. I should have basically a photo of the packaging with the label on it. I should have extensive pictures of the broken item which I did send them but also proof of postage receipt so I want to know from you guys when you have an expensive item that you send with Royal Mail because I know it's not worth it with any of the other couriers because they don't really compensate for anything like that they don't do um, compensation for breakages and all stuff like that they just don't cover it but with Royal Mail, do you take photos of your parcels? Do you video yourself doing your parcels? Do you keep your proof of postage receipt? For me, it's crazy they need that because I think the tracking enough proves that you've posted the item, but they're saying they need this receipt. I have a drawer full of receipts from when I've dropped parcels off, which I would have to go through. Um, and... To be honest, sometimes I do take photos of me packing up stuff, sometimes I don't. But do you think it will make a difference if you do that and keep those photos for everything that you send that is breakable? Let me know, guys. I'm really interested to know your thoughts on this. Let's discuss it in the comments. Here's some more sales to show you guys. I've sold these Carrymore walking shoes. They have gone on vinted for £10. So after what I paid for these, because obviously there's no fees and no postage, um, I will have made £8.50. Happy with that. This is the nail kit that I was going to keep for myself, but when I comped it, I realised it was worth quite a bit so anyway this has gone for £30 so after fees and what I paid I've made about 20 on that I've got a Barbie Mariposa doll here which obviously you can't see because it's in the bubble wrap bag that has gone for 10 Um, I let it go cheaper than I what it had it on for because I've had it quite a long time so after fees and what I paid and postage I've made about £4 on that Crazy Frog, I bought him recently. He has gone for £19. So after everything comes off, I have made about 13 on him. This is a vintage jumper, um, part of a massive, massive bundle what Rob got me ages ago. I've made my money back on it over and over again. This went for £10. So after everything coming off, I have made about 7 on that. And these two tin plates, um, I've had these quite a while. I wouldn't pick them up again. I thought they'd be worth quite a lot of money with them being vintage and, you know, really nice, basically. Anyway, got £10 for these. So after fees and everything, I've made about £3 on them. So not very good at all. Still got all this to list, which I'm just putting off at the moment, but it's there. And I'm going to get this parceled up now, ready to take tomorrow.
I'm going to give a massive shout out to a subscriber of mine, Leslie, who brought me some stuff today. Merry Christmas, Leslie. I am so grateful and I hope you enjoy your chocolates. Mwah. Here's another topic for us to all discuss. The immediate payment thing that's coming on eBay. So basically what that means is that when somebody sends you an offer or they go to buy your item, they will get a message saying that payment needs to be taken immediately. So it's on all listings now, unless you opt out. I know a lot of people I know have opted out from this. I have not and neither has Rob and here's why. I think personally that when you go to buy something, you should pay for it there and then. It's like if you went to the shop and bought a loaf of bread, you wouldn't take the bread to the counter and say, can I pay in three days? Or I'm just going to walk out and I'm not going to pay for it. I know it's different because you've got a physical item then. It's not the same thing, but you get my gist, right? So my thoughts are, I want that on because it means that I'll get customers that actually want the stuff. But, and this is a big but, I have noticed a massive rise in people cancelling orders. They send out a cancellation request as soon as they've paid. Now, they either aren't realising what they're clicking when they're agreeing to payment on the next page, I don't get that personally because Rob has said that he has bought things off eBay and it's very clear. It tells you that if you if you um, send an offer on this on this item, payment will be taken as soon as the buyer accepts the offer. And then you go to another page to basically agree your bank details and what have you and go ahead and buy the item. So I don't get how it's happening, but I have had a lot of things but being bought and then being cancelled straight away. So does that mean that people aren't reading the terms and conditions before they buy the thing because they're that used to being able to send an offer and then not pay for it for however long? Or do you think it's just coincidence? I do think the buyers should be more mindful that there is a four day cancellation policy on eBay if you want to put that on, um, which I have on mine. If someone doesn't pay after four days, then it gets cancelled and it gets relisted. Um, for me, if I was going to purchase something and I wasn't going to pay for it straight away, I would message the buyer first and say to them, um, if I put in an offer for blah, 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 um, is it okay if I pay in two days, three days time, whatever? If you can't afford to buy the item, then don't buy it. You know, maybe that's brutal. I don't know. But I want us to discuss this in the comments because I find it really interesting how different people feel about this. A lot of people have took it off because they feel like it puts people off buying from them. I mean, I've got to admit, when you're used to eBay and the way eBay works, to go on and be told you will be charged for this immediately after you've bought it, it probably does come across as a bit of a, ah, because a lot of people will buy the item and think, oh, I can pay for that tomorrow so I can wait for my money to go in or whatever. But for me, I never buy anything unless I have the physical money. I just don't do it. So let me know, guys, what you think in the comments about this. Do you use this immediate payment thing or have you taken it off? If you do use it, have you noticed a rise in cancellation requests? If you do use it, have you seen a decline in your sales? If you don't use it, let me know why and let me know how it's impacted you not using it. And if you think you've got more sales. I mean, the interesting thing to all of this is that none of us will ever know for sure. It's like when you do the sell similars. We don't know whether that actually gets you a sale or whether it gets your algorithm up. Algorithm is a thing, definitely. The more you list and the more you do on your eBay, the more your stuff gets seen and your shop gets seen. But we don't know whether selling similar every day does something. Listing definitely does. Nobody can argue with that. 
but people do argue that cell similar does not do anything I disagree and the reason I disagree is because a lot of times when I do sell similar on something it does sell that item sells I do it on five items at a time so I know what I've sold similar on and usually they sell within 48 hours as long as I've got the right keywords the item specifics are fine and I've got it at the right price obviously a lot of the time also if you have best offer on and you're not too greedy with your price things will go quickly but it all depends on what you're looking for. I don't think anybody does anything wrong when it comes to reselling because you've got to do what's right for you. We used to um, keep all our stuff high priced and wait for it to go. And nine times out of ten, it always did. But now because I do bric-a-brac and other items that are bigger, I want my things to sell quicker. So I tend to be more competitive with my prices now. My shipping is free and yeah i post out within two days which normally means within one day but i give myself a bit of leeway just in case of anything cropping up let me know what you think guys i'm interested to know what you're all doing with this and how it's been working out for you ebay are implementing things all the time and i was only saying to rob the other day how i feel like ebay two years ago is so different to eBay now and I think it's changes for the better I think they're doing a cracking job and things are changing I think they're listening to sellers and things are going in the right direction but obviously there can be glitches along the way so watch out for them too but let me know what you think in the comments guys I'm always interested to know what you think about these things because this channel's for you and I like to get that advice from you as much as you like to watch me and see what I'm up to. So let me know. Some sales to show you guys. So these were in um, two lots of four plates. I'll show you what they are. They're like a stoneware. They're really nice, glittery. They're by a company called Made. Um, they aren't vintage, obviously, but... They're just a really nice, sturdy set of plates. I bought a while ago these eight plates, four sandwich plates, no, eight sandwich plates, sorry, and three bowls. And I paid, I think it was £10 for all of it. So I've sold the dinner plates. So the guy that bought these, he earns a pizzeria, which is really cool. That's where it's going. So he bought the first four, um, offered me £20, I accepted because they were on for 25 and um, he paid for those and then he offered me 20 on the other set of four so they are all going to the same person so after what I paid and fees and everything without obviously taking into account the plates and the bowls I've got left I am let me think I'm about 20 pound in profit which isn't bad at all after fees postage you know, and cost of the whole set. And I've still got the plates, the sandwich plates and the bowls left. So they are all going to go in one parcel, which to be fair, will probably cost pretty much the same as um, if I did four of them, because I think it'll be a two to five parcel. We'll see anyway. Laurel and Hardy, right, he isn't broken by the way. Um, he has a fishing stick, fishing rod. It is a stick though with a bit of string on the end to be fair and I have put that stick on the side of the ornament and then put this stuff around it so it doesn't get broken. This has gone on Etsy. I paid £5 for this. It's gone for £155 and it is going to the Netherlands. So they've paid postage on top of that to the Netherlands. So after fees and what I paid and everything else that comes off I will have made about £130 on that very happy this is why I have an Etsy account when these sales come in it is so exciting the exciting the, the non-exciting part is me packing it and after what's gone on lately with Royal Mail with breaking things and not compensating me um, I don't even know whether I've talked about that yet but it will be coming up if I haven't, I am going to get Rob to video me parceling this up because I am not letting them get
get away with it anymore. Every time I get an expensive order from now on, and I'm talking £50 and above, and if it's going to anywhere abroad, £30 and above, depending on what the personage is, I'm going to get Rob to film me. And then I will have video proof that I have parceled this up well and it is not my fault that it got broke because I have literally had to pay out over a hundred pound um, out of my own money refunding buyers who have bought things that have, up, have turned up broken and um, Royal Mail will not give me my money back because I did not take photos or videos of me packing my item I did not take photos of the parcel with the label on and yes I have got the proof of postage but it's in a massive um, mound of receipts in a drawer so it would take me a long time to go through it all and um, they expect you to find the receipt and show them it even though the proof is there that the tracking obviously is showing the parcel moving through the system so I don't understand why they need that, especially when the um, evidence is all online as well that I paid for the parcel and that it was delivered broken. So yeah, um, Royal Mail and not in my good books. So this is getting filmed. I'm doing this with Royal Mail because it's a cheaper option to go um, international. But I'm not happy about it really. I would rather give my business to someone else if I'm honest. Sad times, but there you go. Um, you've got to go with the cheaper version sometimes, haven't you? Um, so yeah. <laughs> anyway, now I've stopped spitting venom. I will um, get these parceled up. What I do now, big tip for you all. If I have anything like this, I parcel it like I need it protecting if somebody drops it from a great height. So you can imagine how well these are going to be packed. Each plate bubble wrapped round twice cardboard around each plate and then probably more cardboard in between each plate and more bubble wrap and obviously loads and loads and loads of void fill which I've got some of it here I have got more than that don't worry I'll need more than that for this and there's my bubble wrap over there hiding you see it <laughs> oh that reminds me I need to do the washing yeah so I'm gonna get this done now see you in a bit guys Right, so what do you think to today's video? Let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. I haven't really got anything else to say at the moment. Take care, be kind, stay safe. Mwah! Love you all. Ta-ta!